Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And I'm going to show you in this video how to mix some spooky watercolors. It's World Card Making Day and I'm doing videos every couple hours all day long. And I thought I'd start out by just showing you some colors. Now, this is some sap green. And if you want a murky sort of color, which we kind of want for Halloween, then throw some brown in it and see what happens. Throw some red in it. Just mix up some colors and see how they come out. And you'll be surprised at the kinds of really murky, mushy colors that you can come up with. So if I want to make a sky that's not a like bright, beautiful sky, this is Indian Throne, then throw some other colors in it. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of brown, some sepia. And I threw in too much, so now it looks more like a brown color. But if I rinse my brush out, go pick up some more of the blue, then look at the kind of murky sort of color that I get. It's more of a Halloween type of color rather than just having a, a beautiful bright thing. So what if I take the sepia and I want to dirty the sepia up? I guess you can't really dirty sepia up because it's already dirty, but you can mix some other colors with it. Mix a little blue with it. You can mix a little green with it and you can push that color one direction or the other. It's a little harder for a full sky or a large area because you have to mix up enough paint to make that happen. But I'm going to talk through a way to do a sky in this video where you don't have to worry about exactly mixing up all of the right amounts of everything. So here I'm just kind of fussing around with making a kind of a mushy green brown color. Okay, so I'm going to be using the Art Impressions stamp set with these really cute little guys going trick or treating. And I've stamped everything out, and in order to make my circle, I grabbed a roll of Eclipse Tape, which is what I use for masking sometimes, and made my moon around my cinnamon. And I've mixed up some murky kind of color. This is some uh, quinacridone gold, and I just threw in whatever was left on the palette and just made it mushy. So when you're doing mushy colors like this and trying to make something all spooky, you can get away with mixing just about anything. It's a great way to practice with your watercolors so you get a whole different sense of how the colors mix. And you'll learn something about the colors that you can apply later, but for a card like this, you'll, you'll see by the end of it, I really wanted it to be all mushy and murky and dark and, and spooky. So if I mix a color that looks like baby poo, that's okay for a card like this. So I've uh, put some highlights everywhere around the edges of my little critters because that's where the moon's going to be shining. And then took a, a big swash of it to make the path where they're going to be walking up to the scary house to go trick-or-treating. Throw a little bit of color in the windows and clearly I'm not being real careful with it because I'm going to put a lot of other color over top of it. I just wanted some of that yellow to be in the windows so that it will shine when the, the whole card is finished. And then I had some of that murky green and some murky brown, and I'm just going to kind of mix a couple colors to make the, the road and the grass and everything. And, and just to, to try to create a little bit more of a, an anchor for them by putting some really darker color on the left. And then I want to show you what it looks like when you use, this is more of the pure sap green without so much of the murkiness in it. And look at the difference in the brightness of color. So you can put more bright color right under where the moon is and dirtier color away from it. And it'll draw more attention toward that. And I'm letting the colors just kind of mush together on this road. I'm not going to give it an outline or anything. I'm just going to let that color kind of sit there. And fill in a little bit in between some of these guys. It's hard when you have an image like this and you're trying to discover, okay, which what's a leg and where does one person's cape end and the other one begin and all that sort of thing. So it, it's kind of helpful to just take one color at a time and see if you can figure out where the end of a leg is and try to create some of those negative shapes in there. So then I mixed that murky bluish color because I was trying for that, that kind of spooky sky color. And I knew I wasn't going to get it evenly across the whole thing. It's really hard to do a large area with a really even color, especially when you're going around something. If you're just doing a big old flat wash, much, much easier because you're not painting around all these little things. 
but I'm I'm trying and I'm like it's not gonna work it's not gonna be even but you know we're gonna deal with it as we go so I'm gonna just kind of continue painting I had to mix up some more paint you can tell it's already a different color threw a little of another color in there I'm like okay now I got a really different color and it just keeps changing so if you don't mix enough of the color all at once it's really hard to get the same one after a while you'll get a sense of whether or not you need to add more brown or more blue to a color like that but I thought well let me just throw some more over the whole thing because I had mixed up a bigger puddle of it and try to increase the, the depth of color on this and realizing still that I was probably not going to end up with a good even coat because you can see a lot of those brush strokes on there and it, I either wanted it to be really even and beautiful or I wanted to make it really murky. So I was mixing up more paint and obviously I needed to add more blue so I added a little dab of blue to it so that it would end up being blue instead of that blackish looking color and then started just trying to fill in up to the building. And that's when I was like, okay, now we're going to just start making it really spooky. And I mixed up a really dark color, just threw more pigment in. And when you're throwing in more color like this, make sure the pigment is thicker than the stuff you've already put down. Because if it has more water in it than the original layer, then you're going to be creating blooms. But if you put heavier pigment in there, then it's not going to create blooms. It's just going to make these really kind of spooky, cool clouds. So now I, I have a, a bunch of this dark color mixed and you know for clouds you can just keep mixing color too if they end up being a little bit different color you end up with some other spots of different you know reddish kind of color in there would be kind of cool and spooky and then I'll fill in these little sections at the bottom and I used a really light wash lots of water and just a little bit of that same color to go over my moon and that's also something you can do if your colors start bleeding then go ahead and use a little extra of that to pull it into your moon so it makes it look intentional now here's where i started mixing kind of some murky brown colors i have i put some of the indian throne blue in it with the sepia a little bit of you know black i had a couple other colors that were on the palette just kind of making a mess of a bunch of different colors and I wanted to leave just a few highlights, a few little tiny pieces of light color in addition to my windows that are facing toward the moon. So I get just a couple highlights because I really want the emphasis to be on the mood of the, the thing rather than on every single board on this house. And so I just started adding a little bit more here and there until I was satisfied that I had the right amount of light showing and you can just keep kind of dropping in more color in there to make it darker and darker so i i grabbed some black some lunar black and just dropped a few swashes of that in just to let it be kind of a murky mushy house out in the far distance and now for all of my critters i'm going to color them all the same color they're all going to be like a brownish blackish murky shaded color because the moon is behind them and this is going to make them look like like you're looking at the moon and you're seeing these shadowy shapes they're still going to have all of their little outlines or little stamp outlines but they're going to look like silhouette characters that are moving across the scene without being pure black because pure black could be kind of cool i mean you could you could do this in copics and make them absolutely black with just little highlights around the edges like this but it's kind of fun to have a little bit of the lines showing you'll still be able to see the little bit of the tail of the raccoon so he's still going to look like a raccoon but over on this right hand side that we're getting to um, there's the pig and then the fox but at the bottom there's this thing and on the package it's colored like it's a little green i don't know if it's a frog it's got kind of frog legs i have no idea what he what he was i couldn't figure out where to start and end this little guy so I will probably try to color him in Copics for World Car Making Day so look out for that I'm gonna see if I can figure out where his arms and legs are and what is, what's his face and stuff because it almost looks like he's a frog in costume or something but since I'm doing this as a silhouette really all I have to do is the shapes and as long as I have the shapes worked out and 
throw some color in there, it's all good, right? People are just going to be looking at the fact that I have these really cool shadows of these, these critters walking across the front of the moon, working their way up to the haunted house. Now again, as I've said in the earlier video today, I've kind of realized that my camera adjusts for white light. It's trying to find white, so unfortunately this is actually much darker than what it looks like. You'll see the picture at the end of the finished card, but I, I wish it was more accurate in color because it's kind of not. So I'm looking for where my legs are going to cast shadows and the shadows are going to point toward the moon. So then each one of these is going to point a slightly different direction because they're at a different angle from the moon. And if their foot is up in the air, the shadow is not going to hit the ground. If both their feet are on the ground, then they will end up with a shadow touching their foot. So that's why I have it just on a few of them. But here we go. Here's the real color. Isn't that fun and spooky and crazy? And it saves you from having to figure out what that frog is doing, right? <laughs> the mysterious frog in the stamp design. He's down there. I bet you can't see him and figure out what he is right now. But everybody's going to go look online now and try to look at that picture and see. So go to my Instagram later today. I'm going to try to color this with Copics. And I will see you guys later on. Have a really awesome world card making day. And I'll see you in the next video in a couple hours.